Wow. We Did you like that ride? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. We made it, didn't we, Sean? We did. And uh, my guest today is Sean Mahoney. And uh, we're going to be talking about a, uh, a project that Sean has just completed uh, where he converted a gasoline-powered car uh, into an electric, electric vehicle. And it wasn't just any car. And if we could have slide number, number one, it was a three-wheeled little mini car called a Henkel Cabine. And, and uh, Sean, why don't you just kind of give us a background of this kind of a, of, a, of a vehicle and tell us a little bit about what we're looking at. Sure, Walter. So it's a Henkel, we'd say Henkel Cabine. In Germany, they'd say Henkel Cabina. Cabina means cabin scooter. And uh, after World War II, uh, European countries were in ruins. They really needed transportation. And there were a lot of uh, aircraft manufacturers, especially in Germany, who had all this capacity and they weren't allowed to make planes anymore. So uh, they made microcars and they made scooters. And so this is an example of one of those. This is Heinkel from the Heinkel manufacturer. Heinkel made the first jet engine plane, made bombers in World War II. Okay. Uh, there were three of them. Uh, that were let's, well known. Let's see, yeah, let's see uh, uh, the uh, second image, yeah. uh, Chris, and the third image. So, yeah. so tell us what we're looking yeah. at here, Sean. So what is so this? So there's the Heinkel, and then what you're seeing here is a BMW Izetta. Okay. Uh, everyone knows BMW. This is the car that actually saved BMW. Uh, if they hadn't made this car, they wouldn't still be in business. And w when did they start making these? Right after they the made, war? They made these uh, starting in the 50s. Uh, okay. They saw the design for... A, a product called the ISO, ISO, yeah. which is some uh, was a refrigerator company in Italy. They made a car, uh, so they bought the rights to it. Uh, so that's why it opens <laughs> that, like a that's fridge. Kind of, that's kind yeah. of funny. Yeah, that, that's, that's right. how it opens so, up. And they made those, and that got them through the lean years so they could uh, make better cars. Yeah. And uh, so and let's, then, yeah, and let's look at the third one. You're yeah. just going to start talking. Let's and then the, the final one is the Messerschmitt. Uh, you probably, if you're of a certain age, you probably heard of Messerschmitt. They made famous fighter planes in World War II. Yeah. And so uh, that's really the holy trinity of microcars was the Heinkel, the Isetta, and the Messerschmitt. The Messerschmitt, yeah. the Messerschmitt and the Isetta were sold in the United States in the 50s and 60s. The wow. Heinkel never was. They tried to bring it over. They brought over like 10. They realized yeah. this really isn't our thing. So, yeah. so, uh, so here you are. And uh, um, uh, I have to, I have to in, in, in the interest of full disclosure, I'll tell audience, <laughs> That Sean and I are good friends, we're neighbors, yeah. we go back and forth and have dinner at each other's houses, so I know Sean very well. Yeah. But, uh, so, what gave you the idea to do this kind of project? Well, so I've always had motor scooters. When I grew up, I had a Vespa, and then I had Lambrettos. These are famous Italian vintage motor scooters. Uh, and then I bought a Heinkel motor scooter, which was really a much nicer scooter than either the Vespa or the Lambretta. Yeah. And then one day I got a letter from a guy and he said, I have a Heinkel car. Do you want to buy it? And I never even knew they made a car. Uh, he was in Kansas City. I looked at it. I'm like, well, that really isn't my thing. Uh, but then eventually I kind of warmed up. And so I bought two Heinkels in parts. Um, and I said, I will restore them because I restored my scooters. So I figured it really couldn't be that hard. And they were gas powered. So I restored the Heinkel car that you see here. And uh, the car is really a lot of fun to look at. And when I drive down the street, I cause a lot of uh, commotion oh, and people oh, smile all oh, the time. Do, but yeah. it has a dirty little secret, which is that it has a tiny, tiny engine. Yeah. So it's kind of pokey. <laughs> it's pokey, it's loud, and it smells. So as that, a gas That's the gasoline car. version. That's right. So yeah. I said, all right, well, if I were Ernst Heinkel and I had what was available today, would I make an electric car? So I said, all right, I'm going to convert it to electric. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did. I decided to convert it to electric. Yeah. Now, you had a, a couple of design goals, yeah. finished goals in mind, and we're going to go over that. I'll, I'll just mention, you can tell. So it had to be indistinguishable, which meant what? It had to look like the original gas-powered car, oh. because when I told people on some of the Internet forums I was doing it, I got very negative reactions. I had people saying things like, this is a crime. You shouldn't be allowed to have the car. <laughs> It's a na these are national treasures Real and no one purist, should be allowed to. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe it should look 
It should look like the original car. Yeah, so no body modifications no body or anything modifications. like that. Now, it also had to be reversible, okay? Does that, right. Is that what it sounds like? And that's the same thing. I wanted to, if I ever wanted to sell this car, and given the way these purists were, I thought, well, all right, I'll make it. One, to kind of stick it to them, to show them that I could actually make it reversible. Yeah. So I only had to drill five holes to make it to put in all the stuff I put yeah. in. And then it could just be converted back to the okay. original gas-powered car. Right, and you could do that yourself right now, I right? could, probably in a day and a half. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, you are also looking for uh, a 40-mile uh, range. That's right. right. And you were looking for a, a top end of 55 miles per hour. How, uh, and uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so the original spec on the car was it could go 56 miles an hour. Now, it didn't tell you how long it would take to get to 56 miles an hour, which would be <laughs> almost infinity. Um, so what I wanted to do is have a car that was good in traffic, uh, modern traffic, so that if I was at a light and I wanted to go, I could just go keep up with the flow of traffic and really uh, probably go about 40. But I wanted to be able to go to 55 or 60 if I really needed to because sometimes you're in a situation where the road's fast if you're on a Route 1 or something like yeah, that. You want to keep up with the bicyclists. That's right. right? Yeah, I always want to have the, yeah. <laughs> I always want to have the, uh, you, you're better off having a little bit in reserve. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, running sure. That. So let, let's talk about some of the, the specific things that you encountered and how you, how you solve yeah. these problems. Now, uh, the first thing is the battery location. So tell us about the issues that you encountered there. And uh, Chris, maybe you can put up uh, uh, number four for yeah. us. Well, so the first thing was I had to learn about making an EV. Um, I knew how to restore cars basically because I learned, just learned how to do it. And so the EV was the same thing. I had to learn a little bit about electric battery design and technology. And what I decided was I would use lithium ion phosphate cells, which are basically these kind of square cells, and you hook them together in a configuration to get to the voltage. So what want. we're looking at here is now the, the, the cells are off the shelf. You don't have to make those, right? No, They're I bought the those cells, but I had to put them in a uh, pattern. Okay. I had to build a container, and then I had to make connects. Um, so yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, the, in the article that I read that the, the case had to be waterproof, and this looks like you know, heavy plywood here. How, how did you make, is that waterproof? Is that, uh, yeah, water this is marine plywood, and it is waterproof, uh, rotproof, and um, boilproof, though. I don't really know what that means. So oh, uh, okay. what I did was to test it as I would uh, actually just soak the whole case and then uh, use my multimeter to figure out if I had any kind of voltage leakage. So, so there's, there, there's no indication. What, what are we looking at size right here from side to side and top to top? That's what? probably, uh, the case is probably about 12 inches tall. Um, it's probably two and a half feet long and three feet wide. Okay. And the reason it's H-shaped is so I can, that's where the back wheel sits. In, in, the in that, in that, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And now you also say that you have a battery management system. That's right. So what, what, what is a battery management yeah. system for this vehicle? So the red thing that you see in the picture, yeah. uh, all those cells have different voltages, right? Uh, not by a lot, but what you want to do is you always want to keep the cells in sync. You want to charge them so they all charge up to the same amount, and you want to pull out of the battery at the same rate, and that's what the BMS, or battery management system, does. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, you also uh, had to change out the tires, so we're gonna take a look at, at, uh, at picture uh, number yeah. five. Chris, and tell us why, why, which one is the one, the original, and which one is the, is the, um, well, your, your I tire. mean, you could probably guess. The, the, <laughs> the, uh, the new one is on the left, um, yeah. which is really a motorcycle tire, yep. and um, because Inside that tire, actually, you can barely see it, is the motor. The motor is a hub motor, and it sits inside the wheel. Uh -huh. And that's how I had enough space to do everything. If I had to install a motor with a drivetrain, I probably really couldn't fit it in and get the range I wanted. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's funny because I converted my, my bicycle yeah. uh, into an EV, and that's where, well, that's where my yeah. motor is. It's, uh, it's, uh, it is a big, heavy the, hub motor. Hub, yeah. <laughs> well, my, mine's no law. <laughs> Lighter than, than, yeah. than yours. So, um, and, and so did you have trouble getting uh, the, right, uh, the right tires or were the just? No, the tire, you know, once you figure out the, uh, you're looking really for the height, because um, you want to make it, again, part of it would be indistinguishable. You don't want the car to be way up in the air or, or low. So yeah. the tire was within a quarter of an inch uh, of the original spec of the four by 10 tire that I 
uh, would have normally had on the car. And that didn't make any difference in, in the way the car drives or any of that? No, it doesn't. And also, I put in a, a much bigger tire. It's much wider. Mm -hmm. uh, there isn't a passenger car tire that fits it, so I'm using a motorcycle tire. So okay. I thought I would go wider so I had a bigger contact patch. Now let's let's take a look at the next, uh, um, uh, Chris, uh, the 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 motor mounting the motor, and, and tell us about. Okay, so the original is on the left. Yes. And and the modified one is uh, now. Now that's not your original car. That that you that. Picture. No, I pulled that off the website, but mine looked exactly like that. Okay. Um, because they all were the same. It was okay. a two hundred cc, nine and a half horsepower engine. Right. 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 So it really didn't have a lot of oomph for a car that weighed six hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, and so um, what yeah. I did is I made the whole assembly plug and play. I used the same motor mount so I can pull out, I pulled out the old engine and then I could just plug in my new assembly. Yeah. And then, and then the battery pack is what we see the little that's bit. That's right. Of, uh, that's the. the yeah. I remember how I said it wrapped around. So yeah, that's kind of the, the end but of it. But there's another part then that comes over where uh, the body, right, that comes over the, uh, that's the right. wheel. Yeah. Because so. it's kind of tucked up underneath. Underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I actually did some uh, a conversion here because uh, in your article you mentioned that that the the uh, gasoline powered motor got nine and a half horsepower and yeah. yours is ten point seven two. And I did the math. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a thirteen percent increase in uh, in horsepower. Yes, but it's really you know <laughs> horsepower is one of those. You don't really feel horsepower, you feel torque. And the difference with an electric motor is you get torque from the minute you step on the gas, whereas a, a gas-powered car, it takes a while to get there. So it really, when you're in the car, it seems much more powerful. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's, let's take a look at uh, the uh, electric. Now, you did a kind of a clever design trick here. Uh, let's see the next image, Chris. Now, tell us what we're looking at, at here, Sean. Oh, so this is in the garage uh, where I'm putting in the components. Uh, the most important component is the plug because you have to charge this thing. So what right. I did is I said, all right, well, as part of my little inside joke, uh, it being EV, is I would just use the gas uh, right. filler cap to be my electric charging port. Yeah. So, and that goes into your design uh, criteria of That's not right. changing things around, right? That's right. It's a very, very clever solution. Uh, now, um, you, you you mentioned your workshop and your now what what kind of capabilities do you have in your workshop? I mean I, I know you had to weld some pieces and and uh, tell us you have a CNC capability. Now did you do this all at home or did you contract out pieces of work? Oh or? no, I did everything at home. Yeah. So I'm really a woodworker. My background is woodworking from right. a hobbyist perspective. So I had you know a lot of woodworking equipment and then I bought a CNC machine to do woodworking with. But as it turns out, I can cut aluminum with it, and a lot and a lot of what I needed to do was in aluminum. So yeah. I decided to learn CAD. So I learned Fusion 360, which is a CAD program. So I could design my parts and then cut them out on my machine. Wow! And I know that you you uh, you belong to because I know um, uh, one time you were going out to one of your a gearhead geek conferences. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or you, you were you was that a, a, a what was that? Was that a Henkel special one or was that a motor? Oh, uh, we have a, so a Henkel owners uh, in the U.S. are a tight group. Actually, Henkel owners everywhere are a tight group. Yeah. Uh, and we have a, in the U.S., we have Henkel Fest in Colorado Springs. So yeah. I was out there last year. We drove up Pikes Peak. Henkel. Oh, yep. in your, in your Henkel cars? No, I didn't take my car. I took my scooter out. Yeah. Actually, oh. I borrowed a scooter at that time. Yeah. <laughs> but we usually, we have fun. We drive around. We it's great. Germans, you probably drink some beer too, right? Uh, this beer and all these things. So <laughs> <laughs> it's <always> a beer component. <laughs> now, um, also, uh, you you uh, you mentioned that that uh, there were some electronic components and things that you had to kind of uh, make room for and hide. So, Chris, can you show us uh, image? Yeah, tell us what we're looking at here. This is the inside of the car, right? Yeah, so this is the inside of my car. So uh, I have plaid seats. That's what they originally would have had. My wife, Anne, actually made the seats, so yeah, she's very I know. talented. She, she's very talented yep. in, in that area, yeah. So I needed more space, so I put a little box behind my seat, uh, the driver's seat. And in that box is, uh, you can see a little red button. That's the shut off. If I have an emergency, I can shut it off. Uh. Shut the whole car off, disconnect the battery. And then inside, I have some parts. Um, Are these spare parts or working parts? They're working components. I have a converter so I can run my lights, and I have a fuse box, and I have a couple other things in there. Okay. Now, did, did the original model, did it have, how many speeds did it have? It had four speeds. It was a... Uh, 
Sequential four-speed transmission with right. reverse. So now you changed that considerably. Let's take a look at the next image, Chris. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, one of my CNC projects. So I took the original gear shift uh, plate, which says R. It says R and D right now. It originally said R, and then it had zero, and then one, two, three, four. Right. So where the D is right now, that was first gear, and you just keep going up. But what I did is I uh, made a little... Uh, prototype on my CNC, and then I said, well, I might as well have a phone charging port, too. So I just have R and D and a phone charging port. So that so that has a USB connection? Yeah, I have a double USB, so I could charge my phone while I drive. <laughs> so it's basically, it's, it's like a go-kart, or not a go-kart, but a golf cart. It, it just, you can go yep, front, you go forward, drive, you go and reverse. Yeah. Yep. Okay, very, very good. And uh, let, let's take a look at the dashboard, the next slide. Tell us yeah. what we're looking, how much did you modify? Well, so this is totally new. So uh, I was a woodworker. So this had two little gauges, and... So the first thing, as I said, well, I might as well have a wood grain dash since I'm a woodworker. So I, I cut it out of wood. I got a Chinese bicycle speedometer, and I installed that. And then uh, I have a chrome bezel around the edge, which I made. And then um, the middle Heinkel uh, in the steering wheel, I 3D printed. Okay. Now, now so what, 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 uh, what readouts do you get? You get speed? I get speed. That's the important one. I get battery, and I have uh, distance. I also have temperature of the battery compartment. And that's all in that little screen it's all that, in the you, little that, that you yeah. can read that, yeah. So it looks like those uh, the little black things on the left, that would give you the battery light. That's right. That yeah. It, it, yeah, and the speed. So what, what, <laughs> what's the fastest you've had it up? Well, I've gone 50 miles an hour uphill. Yeah. Um, you have to realize it's a three-wheel car, so... Um, Driving a three-wheel car is much different than driving a regular car. I mean, you don't want to do a lot of evasive maneuvers. Yeah. Even though the wheels are in the front, you could probably still tip it over. But I've gone 50 uphill, which probably translates to probably 65 on a flat surface. Yeah. But um, I don't really have any desire. I like the illusion of speed versus speed. Yeah. If I just wanted to go fast, I would just fly in airplanes all day. So I just <laughs> like to fly. I just like to drive around 30 miles an hour. I was telling someone that when they lowered the speed limit in Beverly to 25, I was the happiest guy around. <laughs> Everyone else was complaining, and I'm like, this is so this good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, uh, I'm, I'm sure that your turning radius is, uh, is, uh, is pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I could good. do all sorts of things. I could do all sorts of parking and turning in this car that you can't do in a regular car. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, one of the other things that, that you did here, because you, you originally had a mechanical gas pedal, to, yes. right? And so you had to turn that into some kind of an electronic thrust. So That's let's, right. Let's take a look at that and tell, it, tell us what oh, we're looking at Oh, so this is here. kind of a goofy thing where I took the throttle that you would normally have on a motorcycle. Like, I couldn't really figure out how to get, how to turn the pedal into an electronic signal. So... There are electronic, there are electric uh, scooters out there now. Uh, so I took an electric scooter throttle and I just made a thing to attach it to my. So when you press the gas pedal, it turns a cable and the cable is clamped onto the throttle and it moves the throttle like your handles on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and that's and now where is that located? Right. That's in the little box behind the seat. Oh, that's yeah. that's where that, that's where that is. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've since found a different way to do it, which is much more elegant. But well, you you you're you're my hero as far as this kind of I can't. <laughs> yeah. Now now uh, so uh, you I read the article that you that, that you yeah. wrote, uh, and um, uh, th this is very interesting because you mentioned I want you to uh, expound on this, but you mentioned that you know when people like you see race car drivers and they and, and something's wrong, they have to pull it in, get jacket up, and, yeah. and they have to get their wrenches and stuff yeah. and change. But you were saying that you can just pull off to the side of the road because you communicate uh, with, uh, with a Bluetooth uh, um, uh, yeah. tablet and it's got onboard software. Tell, tell, us, <laughs> tell us how yeah, that so, works. Yeah, um, so, you know, old-fashioned uh, cars, typically you're getting your hands dirty, greasy, yeah. and you need a toolbox. In an EV, I mean, you still have mechanical aspects, but a lot of the stuff you just program. It's setting parameters on the controller of the motor uh, or the battery management system. So I can make the car behave in certain ways. So, for example, I can change how it accelerates. I can make it accelerate like it's an airplane, or I can make it go really slow when you step on the gas. And uh, you, can, you can do that right from your... I can. I can just plug in and just do it. 
Well, so you, you could actually pull over while you're on a trip somewhere and you could actually change the parameters. I could. Right there. Yeah. Wow. But I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's, it was really good for testing. Uh, when I was testing it, um, I would drive for a while. I'd say, I don't like this. I'd pull over, I'd change the parameter, and I'd drive again and I'd say, all right, I have it where I want it now. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, um, I, I know that you were, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but let's, let's see the, uh, the finished product. Um, and here we're looking, we, we saw a picture originally uh, of the, of the, of the f front of the car. This is the, the back of the car. Yeah. And of course, this is the, the, where the license plate and the, and the uh, yeah. backup lights are. That's the part that, that were put on. We, we saw that earlier, right? Yeah. Now, did uh, you have an electrical vehicle? Did you, was there any special licensing you needed beside being uh, EV? Uh, no, the hardest part of the car, frankly, was getting it insured because um, I didn't know if they would insure my car. The yeah. insurance company. So I gave them a whole book on what I did. Yeah. And they read it and said, this is fine. They really actually read it? Well, they said <laughs> they read it. Now, if you go to other countries, they have much stricter requirements. Yeah. Um, I, I try to build mine to a European spec that if I was in Europe and I sent it in, that they would actually approve it. Yeah. Uh, so I just did all, you know, I gave them diagrams and I gave them graphs and I gave them stuff, all sorts of stuff. So you are insured? I am insured, yeah. Insured. And it was really very easy. So. Yeah, all right. Now, I, you don't have to tell me the amount, but is the insurance, do you think it's, it's very high or is it oh, reasonable? It's, cheap. it's steep? No, it's cheap. It's no, very it's, inexpensive. Oh, it's cheap. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Now, um, you, um, the experience that you've had driving it around, um, what, what, what has been your experience uh, since, since you put the thing together? Oh, it's, it's so much different. It really, if, again, if Ernst Heinkel, who founded the Heinkel company and, you know, his company made this car, had an electric motor in the 50s, he would have done that. Yeah? Oh, yeah, because my car is now super quiet. I hear things now. I hear mechanical things that I ne could never hear before. With the, with the, the motor, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't smell like exhaust, and it's I can actually talk to people. Uh, whereas before, you know, you have to realize a little 200 cc motor pushing a 600 pound car with two people in it. It really had to work pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, uh, now you mentioned the 600 pound. Now is is the is it higher weight now or lower weight then? It's it's higher, but not by a lot. I think it probably weighs 675 now. Okay. Yeah. So so you 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 did away with the with the gasoline power motor and the gas tank and things like right. that, but you had to add the uh, the batteries. Yeah, the batteries and the motor weigh a fair amount. Yeah. 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 And uh, so um, you know, I I I knew that you're a finance guy, basically, right? That's right. My background, I have is, no electrical that, background. And and, uh, and I know you're you're an excellent woodworker. Yeah. I've seen seen the stuff you've done, but. But what you've done here, you know, from a mechanical and electrical engineering, uh, you know, uh, sense, you, you, it just blows me away. I just well, I thanks. Just, I, I mean, I like to do it for myself. You know, I mean, I'm mostly retired, so I have time to just pursue the things I'm interested in learning about. It's really all about learning. Yeah. And and learning how to do new things. And then I like it because I get to drive around them. Yeah, and, and now you were saying, I think you told me that uh, when we were in the car one time that it's so quiet that, that people don't even realize that you're, you're you know, pulling up. And so you said you were gonna do something about actually making an artificial noise of some yeah, sort? Yeah, of I was thinking of making a noise, uh, but I didn't know what the noise should be. You get like an ahuga horn. I could or do that. I could have, you know, like a Darth Vader sound. I could sound like an ice cream truck. I mean, you could make any number of sounds. I just don't know what. Yeah. I don't know what the right sound is for that car. Yeah. Now, what 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 is people's reaction? The the oh, that 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 see the car, see you coming, or what, what's their reaction normally? Well, as a gas car or an electric car, people are very surprised. There's a lot of head turning. I've had it in more than one occasion where people turn their heads and drive into the curb. <laughs> yeah, so, so I've caused accidents, which is pretty funny. Um, I think people, uh, they're just, they've never seen anything like it, so they don't know. They yeah. don't even know if it's real. Yeah. They don't even know, they're amazed that I could even drive it on the road. But yeah. I mean, it was part of automotive history. Yeah. It's a real car, people drove around in these. You know, I, I was looking on the internet, and yeah. there are, um, actually, you can buy three-wheeled electric 
vehicles. Yes. And uh, they're out there. They, they're manufactured, and they're, is, is that become something, you know, a lot of people buying these things? Uh, um, there was a bit of a renaissance. There was a product called Arkimoto, which was uh, designed in Eugene, Oregon. I think they're, they're not making their vehicles anymore. But, you know, throughout time, there have been three-wheeled vehicles. People always thought you could build a three-wheeled vehicle for less money, uh, be more... Um, you know, really good for a lot of stuff. But, yeah. you know, people use their cars for everything. And a three-wheeled vehicle, you really can't use for everything. Yeah. Well, my, my first mode of transportation was a tricycle, so... You know. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have um, um, uh, a website. I do. Uh, and we'll, we'll put that up. Uh, uh, and it's uh, 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 HTTPS uh, colon backslash backslash techdesignworks.com. Yes, and uh, and you invite people to come on and and uh, and uh, you can discuss. Will you like consult with them if they have a project involving? Um, them? You know, I really use the website to just put up what I'm doing. Yeah, because I do. You know, I do my cars right now. I'm doing. I'm restoring two motorcycles. One of which is going to be an EV. Uh, I do a lot of woodworking. I do a lot of stuff on my CNC. I make a lot of stuff. So people are always asking what I'm doing. And it's a lot easier to show them on my website. Yeah. But no, they can go there. Mm -hmm. And as far as, you know, if someone had a question, I'd be happy to help them. Yeah. But I well, mean, I don't, it's not like a thing I would do for a living or get you're, paid to do. You're, you're my hero. I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't learn how to tie my shoes till I was 16. You know, so, so you've got yeah. the skills. Anyway, Sean, well, thank you. Thank you for yeah. coming on. And I'd like to remind our viewers that uh, you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And we'll see you next time.